Good afternoon. I would like to introduce Professor Ignacio Martinez, full-time professor at UNAM at the International Affairs Center. And the topic that we'll present today will be the new global economic agenda. Welcome. I uh, thank you for your attention. The invitation for this important event. Thank, thanks to all of you for being here. My apologies, I will have to leave in a rush. I have some uh, events at 6 p.m. for the university. I would like to start by saying that U.S. economy, a lot has been said about GDP. And I would like to use this context. The heaviest element of U.S. economy, you know that in GDP, you have four elements. Exports, investment, expenditure, and, and consumption. And also with the commercial coefficient, which is minus imports and exports. So the economy and wealth of the United States will drop next year 20%, and I mean in growth rate. And you know this much better than I. You know this better than I know. The U.S. United States economy this year has a forecast of 2.4 for next year 2.0. So it will drop. The wealth of the U.S. represented in GDP, that's wealth created by a society in a given time. As I said, this year forecast is 2.4 for next year, 2.0. So uh, our customer will stop buying. We need to know how much we will drop our sales or purchases. Now, ch China economy, 6.8 for 2018, 6.2, 2019, 5.8, 2020. So you just can make your calculation. Okay, 2020 vis-a-vis. 6.8 minus 5.8 equal divided into 5.8 times 100. That's the result. So this is the size of the results. Those are my conclusions, OK? Taking into consideration in the laboratory, the UNAM, the college I work for, we have a laboratory called Analysis Laboratory in Economy and Businesses. Our forecast is that the US economy has a strong disacceleration or recession for the third quarter of 2020. And this will be on November the 3rd, 2020. This is where we need to analyze this behavior of the economy. I underline the main world economies will have this drop, taking into consideration that next December, uh, Madam. Kernel, Macron, Merkel will leave. This that on October the 21st we have 
general elections in Canada. This implies that the dashboard will move. Out of four, only two after November the 3rd will be here. One of them, Routine Merkel, is retiring. So we will know on November the 3rd whether we have Trump or not. So the score will move. I'm going to set aside this. But as Sonia said, we need to sell. Let's say, I will go to this point, which is more important. Our risk. Why in 2016, the risk crosses the threshold of zero? Why? Because of Trump. Look at how the economy is slightly going to the floor of panic. Great opportunity. In crisis times, you find a lot of opportunities. So, in this sense, let's see how we're doing. This is due to the result of trust. Trust is being lost in international purchase sell operations. This piece of information that I am telling you were, was released by the OECD. And please pay attention. For this Wednesday, the IMF will release the forecast for the economy and accounting sectors at global level. This is the expectations, forecasts 2019, 2020, and 2021. Mexico, as we have in our laboratories, 1.9 next year. And what are we going to have related to this behavior? I believe that this is the most important, how we're doing in terms of risks and how we're doing as consumers, as a producer as well. I'm telling the government that Mexico will not collect what they expect in taxes because the economy is dropping. Why? Well, because there is a synchronized global disacceleration. Something very important. For the year 2020, this is completely different to 2009. Because the procedure is completely different. It's a different procedure. Why? Differently from 10 years ago or 11 year, years ago, economic growth was different. We came from a disacceleration. Remember how we were doing in September 2008. 11 years ago, this was really a great scenario. The bubble of the US economy blows out in November, in spite of promising expectations, because it is not the same behavior as previous years. See how the relationship with China. I uh, did this calculation from 2001 to 2017 and 2001 and 2016. So, Acrobat was like uh, there's technical problems. I need help.
How is the relationship like between China and the U.S. during the period of 2001 to 2017? The behavior in foreign trade, only in exports, is China 9.4, same period in the U.S. 9. So only taking like two years as reference, 2001 and 2017. The growth of the sh total share of exports of China around the world was 9.4%. Well, calculating this two years, the behavior of global overall exports of the U.S. in the world was less than 35, 22%, minus 35%. 22%. So here we have Dr. Connolly, which is the authority. I don't know what, how many adjectives I need to qualify her. Well, talked about this, that what does China have? How the relationship of China with North America, the country that were, uh, that China sells the most is the U.S. We have Canada imports the same behavior. This calculation, when, when I think I don't have 2022, so how, yeah, how's the the trade balance with the U.S. If China sells more to the U.S. Of, of, uh, and China, it is like the one that uh, buys the least. So the the uh, commercial the commercial trade of China with the U.S. is this one. This is what is at stake. And another aspect on the tariffs. This is what these agencies considered regarding the impact that is, uh, well, impact cost. This is what I call trade friction between the U.S. and China since the, the imposition of tariffs between one another. Who is losing more? China, the, because of the size and the monster it is. So this is, if China, this is what I'm analyzing. I have analyzing this for years because of China and its size uh, goes below 6%. We have to be very careful. We need to find another dynamics in, in the decision making locally and internationally because the monster can be like, uh, can affect us a lot. I, I'm sorry that I'm saying this. I don't know what would cause the impact, the epicenter or the eye of the hurricane. If the Chinese economy uh, reaches 5%, we will have a level six hurricane and a 10 level epicenter together. So this will be will move brutally because of what China implies. So in two years, only in two years, the welfare of China or wealth has been reduced in 17, 24 percent. And this because of the tariffs uh, in position. So we need to consider if you about the five, the, I don't know the letter of the 500 companies wrote to Trump because of the promise. He ends this year. He will end the the Trump's fiscal. 
program. So what those 500 said, that there's told these 500 companies there's a new fiscal program as of the 1st of October. So what does this imply? If you want this program, please vote for me. So uh, this makes us analyze the behavior of the economy. This is from two weeks ago, updated like yesterday. We continue with a 4%, but for by 2020, this will drop 1.6. So we went from 4%, according to the WTO, the volume of foreign trade of goods. The volume of the goods went from 4 to 1.6%. This is the size of the abrupt fall of foreign trade of goods. Uh, well, mentioned by the WTO. So f 4 minus 1.6 equals uh, that divided into 1.6. Please tell me the result. So uh, what does this imply? You see what I'm saying in, in the slide. This is my forecast, the uh, presentation by our friend Mauricio. You don't know him, but he's a dictator. It's dictatorial. The slides, the graphs. He asked me this for uh, a year ago. So I told him, yeah, hold on, hold on. Well, where's Mauricio? OK, so uh, well, uh, I name here Mauricio Hobbs. Well, Russo, he would correct Russo talking about political political science. So this is our forecast. And the economy that dropped, dropped uh, the most is China. So this, I want to highlight the, the presentation uh, well, was sent to Mauricio two weeks ago. But this is the interesting part of the lab. It is not to have the the crystal ball and play, uh, uh, perform as a Python. No, if you have all these instruments, what can I tell you? If you know how to do the audit, you know how, like, the pulse of the patient, OK? So this is the situation we have. So here we have the other exercise. Well, this will be adjusted from Wednesday night to Thursday morning. So what's the forecast that will be reduced even more for Thursday morning? So I did more or less the same exercise. I did it per period, 2017, 18, 19, and 20 for both countries. And the growth in this period is 2.4 percent. So we were in the calculation 2.4 percent. The U.S. China in this period 6.4 percent like conducting the analysis of the bo of both results china the behavior of chinese economy by 2020 even with the drop is 166 above that of the us so i want to highlight if we take the this data from the ocde is 2.5. This is, let's see what the IMF would tell. We we'll put it at 5.7 because of the data that we have uh, behind. So I want to highlight, we need to be very attentive to what is going, what is yet to come. So I have, mm, 
So we need to be very attentive to what is going to be announced on Thursday, because in terms of Mexico, the revenue law will be affected. We need to take into account the declaration of the statement of the former Ministry of Justice. We cannot grow above 2% because he doesn't talk about setback because a recession. If a minister of the Treasury talks about recession, be careful because the global recession is coming really, really strong. So this was said like two uh, hours ago. I'm, I'm, I'm in the Secretary of Treasury, OCD, three hours ago. So China will grow 5.8%. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mauricio. So I have to leave. Give us one more minute of your two minutes running late. Uh, we will grant you your diploma. Thank you very much. Your topic was really interesting, like all the ones that were presented before. So thank you, Ignacio, for your wonderful presentation. So you see CS America grants you the, this recognition to Ignacio Martinez Cortez for his valuable participation in our module six of global economy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the official photo. So meanwhile, I have a couple of announcements. 